left off last time, we were working on the spell class. And the volume cut out on my mic, or at least it stopped recording. So uh, we're going to have to go through, or at least I'm going to have to go through and redo all these. But I figured before I do, let's go ahead and actually create our spell uh, generator. Uh, for testing purposes, we're going to go ahead and set this up. So we're going to create a new C-sharp script. And I'm just going to call it Spell Generator. Now what this is for is just to create some random spells for us to play around with. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up in Mono Develop. Now we're going to come in here and get rid of the update method as that's not needed. Uh, eventually we're going to switch this over to uh, Singleton. Uh, but for now let's actually go ahead and create a game object uh, to test with. So I'm going to go, I'll have to open up a scene to test it with. So I'm going to go to my tutorial scene. And it looks like for some reason my scenes are actually missing now. Uh, that'll be quite a pain because I'm going to have to go through and redo them. Uh, let me just shrink some of this up. Screen. Okay. Scenes. Oh, here they are. They're outside. Uh, must be really late. Uh, but for some reason, they're not showing up in here. There we go. <laughs> Silly me. It is late. Only folders show up here. I'm still getting used. I'm trying out this whole two column display. As your scene gets bigger, it is kind of nice to organize it this way. But uh, as you can see, I am still used to the one column display. But anyway, I'm going to go into my tutorial scene. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm going to create a new game object up in the hierarchy up here. And like I said, this is just for demo or for testing purposes. I am going to be getting rid of it. Uh, but for testing, it's going to be a lot easier if we actually have some sort of game object up here. So I'm just going to call this uh, double space uh, spell generator. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that script we just created and drag it on. Come down to the spell system, spell generator. There we go. I guess technically we could have just hit the add component when found it that way. But anyway, it's attached. I'm going to go ahead and save my scene. I'm going to come back into my script. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new function called, I guess we'll call it create spell. Uh, this will be public. I'm actually going to return a spell. I'm not going to have anything passed in for now. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. So the first line of code I'm going to put in here is just simply creating, well, a new spell. So I'm just going to say spell. And we'll just use spell lowercase is equal to new spell. And we'll come over and take a look. We're going to be calling the constructor, which is going to load all of this for us. And, you know, to be honest, now that I think of it, this is probably better off to test if we were not in our tutorial scene, but actually in a completely empty scene just to test on. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete the spell generator there. I'm going to create a new scene. We'll just come up here and create a new game object. And we can't create an empty. So I'll just go up to the menu, create another empty, and I'll just do the exact same thing, spell generator. And we drag the script on. And we're getting a warning that, or sorry, an error that it's not returning anything. It's because we're not done. But I am going to save this scene, at least for now. I'm just going to call it spell test. And we can always delete it after we're done. All right, so let's go back into our code. And like I said, the easiest way would probably be just to hit a key and actually have it go off. So I will need that update function that we deleted. So we'll just put it in here. And now up here in the start function, let's go ahead and make a call that calls this function. Now we're returning a spell, and I want to keep that simply because when we do we start to get closer to finalizing this script, uh, we do want to be able to have to create a spell and just return it back to uh, whatever called the, the method. So I'm just going to come up here and create another spell. And I'm going to call this one spell as well. But it's going to be equal to create spell. And I'm just going to start off by calling debug log. And let's check that spell's name. 
So I'm going to say spell dot name. And right off the bat, we'll probably get an error because I don't think we've actually set it over here yet. Yeah, so it's going to go ahead and it's going to throw that exception. We've gone over exceptions in C Sharp already. And we actually need a return statement here before we go. Okay, so let's see, we'll just take a look here and let's go ahead and we'll run it and we'll see that we'll get an error when it starts up. And of course, it's the uh, not, not implemented. It's the throw an exception. So we're going to go into our spell class and let's go ahead and actually set this up. So the way I really wanted this to be, because there's not going to be any sort of error checking that we need because the user is never going to input any data. Uh, we can just go like that. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this property up to the top because that's generally where I like them. Above the constructor, below my variables is generally where I put them. And let's go ahead. We'll save that off and let's go try it again. So we'll hit clear. Uh, start it back up. And the error we're getting is actually with our rarity system, we're trying to set the, um, the rarity in our constructor. So we're actually going to have to go through here now anyway. Yeah, I can see I'm trying to set the rarity here. And of course, we don't have those methods uh, set up yet. And I didn't want them to be methods anyway. I just wanted them to be uh, properties. So I'm going to go ahead. We'll fix all these up. Uh, effect I'll leave because we're going to be doing it later, but uh, I might as well just copy this part. Be a little quicker. Uh, same thing with description. I'm not actually going to be having a description uh, that the player enters. We're going to be doing that ourselves. So pretty much everything that wasn't a private set, uh, we're switching over to this. This one too. Uh, cool down timer. Okay, we're gonna leave those two. Uh, I'm gonna leave the spell effect because we're not working with it yet. So it looks like I got them all. So I'm gonna go ahead and move them all up to the top. Well, oh, not that one. Okay, and we'll put them right under the other one. Right under name. We'll save this off. Let's go see if there's any more. Errors. We are still getting well, about one. Let's go ahead. We'll start this up. See what happens. Ah, uh, there we go. We got need name. Great. That's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead back into our script. We're going to go ahead and add some lines of code just to fill in the rest of these uh, fields up here. And I'm going to do that down in the create spell. So I'm just going to say spell dot name. And let's go ahead and we'll just call it spell one. Now for sp spell name later on, when we start to finalize it, I want the name to be generated by, you know, the type of spell it is as far as damage wise. So, you know, if it's a fire spell, it's going to be called fire. And then if it's a single target, I'll probably call it a bolt where if it's an area of effect, I'll call it uh, a ball. So you could have, you know, like a fire bolt, fireball, Lightning bolt, lightning ball. Uh, just an easy way to tell when you look at the spell uh, whether or not it's A or we or not. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to go ahead. We'll do spell name. Uh, next will be rarity. And I'm actually just going to keep the rarity as common for now. We'll just say rarity type common. Uh, the next one on the list is line of sight. And I'm going to switch that to true. Uh, next will be the description. And we'll just say 
This is the DSC. And of course, the next one we want to work with is base cooldown time and cooldown variance. So I'm going to switch the base cooldown time. Uh, let's make it 2.5. And cooldown time variance. Uh, we'll make this one equal to random dot range. And we're going to go from anywhere from negative uh, 0 0.02 or 20% to positive 0 0.2F. I'm going to go ahead and save that off. And I think there was one more. Oh, that was it. So let's go ahead and head into Unity. Make sure there's no errors. And let's add a few more lines up here to debug out the variables we've put in. I'm just going to copy that, uh, paste it, get rid of the name part. I'll copy again just because it'll be a little quicker. So now I can just go dot rarity. And I'm just going to keep putting all of these out. After line of sight, we have description. Uh, base cooldown timer and base spell variance. That's not the one I wanted. Uh, cooldown timer variance. Great, we'll save that off. Let's go ahead back in. No errors. We'll start it up and we get some values. Let's make sure everything's there. Nothing aired. So uh, we now have a script that actually creates a base spell, but we're not actually really going to be doing anything with the base spells themselves. What we actually want to do is create these spell types that we have up here. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.